I've been a bit behind in my podcast listening lately, as I often listen when I'm driving from place to place. But this week I decided to find time to listen and started with an episode of Spoiler Alert by MovieOutsiders.com. It's a podcast in which I really enjoy the banter between the two hosts, one of whom happens to be a friend of mine. Now, the two of them often talk about new released movies or former best pictures, but a few weeks back they did a viral episode in which they reviewed Outbreak and Contagion, two movies that focus on viruses for obvious reasons. Now, the final piece of the episode before these two people share their closing thoughts are five listener-submitted questions, and I was really intrigued by the last question. Essentially, it asked, what do you think life will look like four months from now? Sort of an interesting question, and I pondered it myself for a few moments before I stopped and I realized that if you would have asked me what I thought life would look like four months ago today, my imagination wouldn't have been anywhere close to the reality that it has become. This is really hard. It's challenging. It's tiring. The amount of mental gymnastics we are asked to do on any given day is exhausting. Serendipitously, perhaps, a little later, I started organizing a pile of papers in my home office, and I came across a poem that we'll use for our reflection tonight. But I want to share with you now how it begins, because I found it so refreshing. It says this, What if you thought of it, and the it is being the pandemic, as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? You see, we talk a lot about the challenges the pandemic brings, but what if for a short time tonight we turned our focus in a different direction? What if we thought of this as sacred time? What if we allowed the scripture and the reflection and the prayers and the music to wash over us and to center us in a space of thanksgiving for the blessings that may come through this difficult time? For the God that we worship uses every moment, every time, every situation to proclaim promise, to remind us of that most amazing gift that God has given. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our scripture this night comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to him, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, Jesus said to the man who had a withered hand, Come and stand here. The man got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to him, Stretch out your hand. And the man did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus.
title of the poem is called Pandemic, and it is by Lynn Unger. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or for worse, in sickness and in health so long as we all shall live. Let us pray. Lord God, all over the world, people are slowing down and reflecting. There are places where the noise has ceased and people are hearing creation sing. There are places where people are opening their windows and singing to the streets so that no one will feel alone. There are hotels that are opening their doors and offering housing to homeless, restaurants that are offering food to those who have none, businesses who are assisting the sick and weary. All over the world, Lord, people are looking at their neighbors in new ways. All over the world, people are being reminded of a new reality, to how big we really are, to how little we really have, to what really matters to love. And while there is fear, there does not have to be hate. Lord, and while there is isolation, there does not have to be loneliness. While there is death, there can always be a rebirth of love. Wake us, Lord, to the choices we make as to how we live now. Breathe your spirit of new life into us. Help us to have eyes to see the clearing sky. Help us to have ears to hear your creation singing. Help us to share the love that encompasses all. Help us to consider this most sacred of times as we pray the prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
hope to see you this Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday morning worship. There'll be more details in our Friday email that goes out. But tonight, blessings upon the rest of your evening or whenever it is that you happen to be listening. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.